Hi everyone, Rad Drew here. Today I'd like to share with you some uh, black, a black and white app that I've really enjoyed lately. Um, a lot of the times uh, I'll take an image in color with the um, just a native camera or any other camera with the iPhone and I'll process it and sometimes I'm satisfied the, with the color version but there are some things that I, I look at them and think you know how would that look in black and white and Black and white has a tendency to, you know, by stripping away the color, kind of leaves the the essence of the form and the line that's uh, that's in the image. And I I really find that it um, sometimes the, without the color, the image is more more powerful, more impactful. Um, so what I want to do today is show a couple of um, uh, techniques that I use with uh, an app called Dramatic Black and White. It's an app by uh, Jixi Pix, um, and Jixi Pix is a, a a manufacturer that or a company that makes a variety of apps that run on both Android and iPhone as does uh, dramatic black and white they've been around a while this is not a new app um, I'm gonna go ahead here in my search and type in dramatic and there it is it pops up right here it's a little blue and uh, white icon with uh, I believe it's got an elephant on the on the image so I'm gonna go ahead and open up dramatic black and white and this is what the interface looks like um, across the bottom you have all the tools for um, loading and uh, manipulating the image and incidentally you know most of the Jixi Pix apps whether it's dramatic black and white or vintage scene or any of a host of others the interface is pretty much the same on all of them so you learn one and you pretty much know how to navigate and um, and use the tools in all of them um, across the bottom here you notice uh, on the left you have get photo you can do some cropping of the photo once you get in it. There's an info button that I, I recommend you take a look at. Um, when you tap on the info button, not only do you have some just some general information about the app and how to use it, but also if you scroll down far enough, um, let's see, you'll find that it lists the image or the apps that run on the iPhone. And also if you tap on Android, you'll see the lists that run on Android. So um, you can see there are quite a few and these are all tremendous apps. I, I've used them all and enjoy them all. Um, and uh, anyway, so let's go back to our, our main interface here. I'm going to start by going out and getting an image. <clears throat> to do that, I'm going to tap on Get Info there on the left, open that up. And I have a folder that I created here called Dramatic Black and White where I have some of our images. And I'm going to start by <clears throat> grabbing one of these uh, Selecting one of these images here. Let's go with the one of this uh, this building in Rehoboth Beach. Uh, I was out, got to do a, a workshop and a conference at uh, the Photo Beach Bash in Rehobo Beach, uh, Re Rehoboth Beach uh, in March, and this is one of the hotels along the beach. So you notice as soon as I bring the image in, it it automatically uh, applies a certain set of uh, adjustments to the image, and that's random. There's no rhyme or reason to it. But you can go in then and begin to manipulate this image and make your own choices. So the first thing I'm going to do, if you look at the star down below, you've got the home, which is where we are right now. The next is the star. Tap on that. You have all of these different presets that exist in the app. So you can begin to, you can kind of tap on each of those and explore what they look like. And you notice each is a little, a little different. You've got some uh, kind of noir looking things down here, very spotlighted effect. Um, which is one of the great things about this app that lets you manipulate, kind of almost sculpt the light, uh, which is can be a lot of fun with uh, portraits as as well as architectural things. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to select this very first one, um, and I'm going to, in order to just sort of eliminate that effect a little bit, I'm going to grab my the handles, <coughs> excuse me, on the spotlight, and open it up. So you notice how it, as I do that, it kind of removes some of the vignetting around the edge. And you can just you can drag this around any way you want and size it with these uh, with these little uh, handles on the uh, on the circle. So now um, now we can begin to manipulate the image and do the things we want. So the next little icon here are these three bullet points. I'm going to tap on those, 
and this is where you can begin to do some adjustments. You notice you've got a tone adjuster. You have a slider there to the right that lets you soften or sharpen the image. You have a darken and brighten slider, and then you have a contrast slider. So the first thing I want to you know, talk about here is this tone slider on the on the left. You notice there's a there's a green or a little you know box there with color in it. Um, if we tap on that box, you have a color picker, and you can then begin to choose whatever uh, tone, tone or color tone that you want by sliding. You can slide the slider over here on the right in the uh, in the uh, color spectrum on the right, and then you can take this little dot on the screen and slide it around. Now, if you're actually doing um, color work that re and you know your values, you can even tap on. Um, go down here and use these sliders and select the actual values for red, green, and blue. Um, I don't usually, I don't usually have a need for that. Uh, but uh, if you're doing graphics or, or things online, you might find uh, that you have those numbers. You can go ahead and um, use the sliders to achieve that. So let's go. Just pick a, a color here, kind of a maybe a sepia tone looking thing. Maybe make it a little more yellow and just slide that around and now I'm just going to tap back on the screen and now you notice the box is yellow and as I take the tone slider move it to the right I'm beginning to add tonality a uh, color tonality to uh, that image I can go all the way up or I can back it off so this is a way for uh, to achieve um, kind of a tone or a, a sepia tone and be able to um, control how much of that color you allow um, let's go ahead and reset that back to zero. I'm just going to slide it down to where it's all the way to the left because I want the black and white for this. Um, the next thing we have on the right is a slider that allows you to soften or sharpen the image. I'm going to zoom in on this. This is a really fun um, tool in this app. Um, of course, sharpening. Now, one of the things to mention, I've already taking, taken this image into Snapseed. I have already done my processing, which includes structure and sharpening and tune image uh, adjustments and all of that. And if you're interested in how, you know, that process, you can find a, a couple different videos on my YouTube channel on uh, using Snapseed. I, I have a standard uh, workflow that I use and I, I, I show that in one of the other videos. But my point is I've already taken this image into Snapseed. I've processed it completely. I mean, this is what the, what the image looked like when I took it out of Snapseed. So I've already done the color and sharpening and all the things that I want to do. Then I take it into uh, dramatic black and white. So I don't usually have a need to sharpen the image further. But one thing I like here is I often like to soften the image. So let's just take this all the way down. Look what's happened now. We've given this image just kind of a dreamy look. Um, it's a look I like. I use um, uh, other apps sometimes to uh, create that effect in my images. Um, and I just think it adds another dimension to some images. So you have an option to do that. I'm going to pull that back up maybe about halfway on softness. And then below you have a, a slider that lets you darken the image or brighten the image. Um, this is important if you've got if you're looking at an image and you've got areas like maybe up here where the where it's bright, you can really watch to make sure that um, those areas don't get blown out as you make adjustments here. Um, and between the brightness slider and the contrast slider, sometimes it can help you prevent um, losing detail in your highlights. The contrast slider, again, if you take it all the way to the left, it's going to get sort of uh, muddy or whatever and not, not as um, detailed with between uh, the line between black and, and white in the image is a little less apparent. If you take it all the way up, you can have a very high contrast image with very dark darks and, and white whites. I find that I have to be careful with this. Um, it's kind of like, you know how sometimes, I don't know about you, but I, I often oversaturate my images with color. It's real easy to do because, you know, let's face it, it's just really pretty. But um, I have to be careful not to oversaturate. Well, in the same way, I'm really careful not to over add too much contrast to my images. It's very um, tempting to do that, so I kind of have to check myself and watch about that. But anyway, um, so those adjustments can be made. To the image and then the next thing we have are the um, after the bullet points here there's you see the uh, the icon with the tor the portrait uh, black portrait icon in it so I'll type on that this is a really another really useful tool in here we've got we can make adjustments to the red green and blue filters in the image so I encourage you to slide those around and see what they do if I take the black the red all the way up the sky goes darker um, and it the way it 
the way it shows the white in the image is very different. The same with green. If I play with that, I can move those tones around. And you notice how it's dynamic. When I slide the red, it's also sliding the green and the blue. We're, we're making that adjustment on each of those simultaneously. So it's a place where you can really play with um, with the way the light is working in your image. Notice, look at the windows in the, uh, in the, in the hotel. If I bring the blue up, look how bright they get. Um, kind of really pops the windows. So you have a lot of um, you know leeway there. The next thing that I really like on this image is you have a black and white strength slider. What that means right now, we are at full black and white. So as we look at this image, it, it's completely black and white. But if I take this slider and slide it back to the left, let's take it all the way down to zero. Now look, we've got a little, just a little trace of color in the image. Um, this, this image is already, I don't know why it's not bringing more color, but you can begin to play with these sliders a little bit again, and you can see how you can get the sky to come in a little more blue. Um, so sometimes in, in images, I like to have a little touch of color. Um, I don't know, when I was in college, we used to use, um, uh, what were those called? Um, uh, Marshall oil paints and you could take a black and white image and hand tint the black and white paper with these Marshall oils and it would give you a very soft color um, and this is kind of the the same effect here you're able to um, add a little touch of color to your images and it's often a lot of fun to do that the next thing that you have down at the bottom here and I'm going to slide that strength and black and white all the way all the way up so it's fully black and white on the bottom here we have a grain strength so you can actually add grain to the image if you want. I'm going to zoom in here and look at the, the sky and I'm going to bring the, the uh, slider all the way to the right. Look, I've just added all this grain. Now not only can you add grain, but you can tap on the little square at the end here and you've got, what, seven different grain patterns to choose from. Um, and this is just a fun effect sometimes. It's uh, kind of, it always depends, you know, on the image and, and what you're trying to say, but it just gives you another, um, Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to slide that slider. There we go. It just gives you another um, another tool to uh, to imp impact how the image works. So again, I'm going to slide that strength on the grain all the way down to zero because I, I want to leave it fully black and white and as, as sharp and grain free as possible on this one. The next thing here you have at the very end of this row is a, is the spotlight tool. So what we're looking at here on the screen, that circle is what they refer to as a spotlight. And then you, the adjustment that you make occur within that spotlight. So you can take that spotlight and you can bring it down, you can move it around. And then, so let's say you wanna emphasize that center column in the building. And you can see how it's gotten very dark vignette now on the outside, but if you go down to the um, I'm sorry, if you tap on the spotlight icon over here, um, you've got a slider here, and if you bring it all the way up, um, you're going to have the spotlight with a very dark vignette. But if you take that spotlight down to the left, look how we're now we're a allowed, you know, we can adjust how much of the darkness is around in that vignette. And what's cool about this, I mean, you can you see how you can kind of sculpt where you're putting the light. You can also, if you go down and tap on the spotlight button here at the bottom again, you can add another one. So now you can begin to play with um, how that light is playing through the image. And look at that. And so now we've kind of I've added a little bit of, I'm poking or pointing the, uh, the viewer to where I want to look. So um, if we go up to the upper left here, you'll see a little icon that's a square with a little image in it. If I tap on that, it'll show us well, it's very temperamental sometimes. It shows before, before, <laughs> come on. Okay, that expands it, and before and after. There's before, and there's after. So we've had a lot of fun with um, moving the light around on this image. Um, that's it, now you're ready to save your image. Um, once you're ready to do that, you go back over here to the home button where the, it's a, the house icon. We'll tap on that and you have a save button and you can tap the save button and it will save your image to your camera roll. But before we do that, I wanna point out one other thing. You see where it says share, there's a share icon there on the right. I'm gonna tap on that and you have a whole host of choices, but one of the, the choices under save here 
is to save a preset. Well, we have just done all of these adjustments to create this image the way it is. And maybe I have several other images uh, in this series of this building, and I want to apply those same, um, the same adjustments to each image. Well, if I go to the share icon here, I can set, tap on Save Preset, and now I can, set, I can name this preset. I'll just call it um, Building uh, BMW and or something. You name it whatever you need to name it to remember it. So there, there's our um, building BW and I'm going to tap OK. So now when I next time I bring an image in I can go down to the star icon and I can slide all the way to the end here. Let's see. Where did it go? Back and white. Well where is it? It's hiding it from me. Um, da, 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 da. There it is. Some, I don't, it's kind of, I'm not sure always where it puts it, but you see right down here in the bottom, it says building black and white. There is our preset. So now we've, we've done all that work, we've saved it in a preset, and we can apply it to future images. Um, that's it. So I'm going to go back here, I'm going to tap save, and it's saving it. And it's saving it at, uh, you know, at the highest resolution available for the iPhone. And there are no settings within the app to allow you to. Um, set the um, the saving uh, size and everything. It just saves in one one size large. So let's go out, look at the camera roll, and there's there's our image. So there's where we started with this image in color, which is f a fine image. I might have stopped there, but there's the black and white where we've sculpted and kind of pointed the viewer to look at different parts of the image. Let's take one more real quick, um, and uh, this one is. Um, this is one I had a lot of fun with. This is a uh, this is uh, Claudia from uh, Cuba. She's a dancer with the Cuban National Ballet. And let's see, I'm, I'm going to go back into dramatic black and white, and I'm going to go to home, and I'm going to say get a photo, and I'll go out here to my folder, and I'll grab this image of Claudia. So again, automatically, it's taking it in, and it's uh, assigning different values to this image. So what I want to do is make this a really moody, no, almost noir image. I want that light that's shining on her face and her torso to be really figural, and I want to have just this, this mat that she's sitting on be part of that. And I want the background to just slide off into, uh, into less, you know, just kind of be quiet in the background. So the first thing I notice as I look at this, um, well, I'm going to tap on the star, and I'm going to go down to this very first black and white, Let's see, yeah. And I'm going to open this up so I can see what's going on. So I'm opening up this, um, oops, sometimes to get it to open up you have to make it smaller. And I'm just using a two finger pinch to, uh, to make it larger and smaller and moving the, uh, there. So now, as I, as I look at this image, I'm noticing that these areas right here in the uh, in the mat and these areas on her face are very um, hot. They're too they're, they're blown out. I'm losing detail, and I don't want that to happen. And the details there in the original. So I want to go into my um, bullet point sliders here, and this is where I'm going to play a little bit. Um, I'm going to see what happens if I drop if I drop my contrast down. Look at that. I brought her face back just by dropping the contrast just a little bit and I brought detail back into these areas here. Now I might also come down and darken the image just a little bit. So again, I'm getting some of that detail back in the mat that she's sitting on rather than having it be blown out. So now um, I'm going to keep the tone the way it is, but if I wanted to I could give this a slight tonality by adding a color. I'm going to keep it in the black and white. But now I'm going to go over and have a little bit of fun with the softening over here. I'm going to take this down and soften that image. And look at how we've just kind of given this a very romantic, noirish kind of uh, uh, a look. And by doing all of those little things. Um, so here's where the image started in color. And here's where we've taken it now. The next thing I'll do is tap on the, um, the icon with the head in it there, the black uh, head. And I can begin to play a little bit more. I can look at these um, sliders and see if, if I can make any. I want to see if I can 
bring in the detail a little bit of that mat. Again, I just don't want it to be blown out. But you can see how these slight shifts let you decide how you want to illuminate her face and so on. Um, and I can add a little blue. So I'm kind of liking that. Let's see if I've got... Yeah, so I don't have any blown out areas in the... Uh, I've still got detail in the cushion and her face looks lovely. Um, and if I want to now, here's where it gets interesting. I can take the black and white strength and slide it back. And look, I'm adding a little bit of color back in. Let's go all the way down. So now, look, we've got, you can see the little bit of green in her leotard. Um, her skin now has more of a, a flesh tone than strictly white. Um, it's just another way to add a, a, a little fine nuance to the image. If we wanted to, we could play around with some grain. If we wanted to add that in here, I'm not sure I do, but um, you could, and uh, that's where you would do that. Kind of brings in some texture in the floor, but I don't particularly like that on her face. So I, oops, uh, so I want to uh, bring that slider down there. And by the way, this little icon up here, the, the cross arrows, if you tap on that, it enlarges it. You can take two fingers and move it around, and then you can tap on it again, and it brings it back to center. Um, so now let's go to the spotlight at the end. Now, right now we've already got this one spotlight here, and if I bring this in, it's going to bring my vignette. You see how it's, look at the floor, how as I bring the vignette in, it's darkening that floor, and I kind of like that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what, probably where I'm going to stay. I'm not going to do a whole lot more with that one. Um, so I'm going to go back to my um, the home button. And before I go, um, I have a couple other images of Claudia that are similar. And I'm going to go to the share icon first. And I'm going to save this preset. And I'll just call it um, Dancer and leave it at that. And now when I come back next time into my... Um, presets here there's the there's the one right there that we just created and, and it'll have those same um, adjust excuse me adjustments to apply uh, to the next image so I'm going to go back to the home button and I'm going to tap on save and let's go take a look at that in the camera roll and let's see there we go and there it is I mean that's just really um, I just love the way that app lets you play with the light. Um, that's it. That's all I wanted to share for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, take a look at uh, what you can do with your images. And just, I encourage you to uh, think, of, think in black and white <laughs> from time to time and see uh, if your images um, take on a different uh, uh, impact or a different tone and message when you change them to black and white. Thanks a lot. If you like this, please uh, uh, subscribe or give me a thumbs up and I um, uh, hope you'll visit my website and see some of the other things that I've got going on. We have some great trips coming up this fall. Uh, I've got a Cape Cod uh, trip in October and then uh, I have two spots left in a, in a trip to uh, Cuba this fall with a small group of eight people. Um, would love to see you on one of those. Take a look what's out there and uh, until next time uh, have fun creating.